if you're now expecting a sermon to do with fathers. <laughs> because the only thing that kept coming to mind the Lord gave me was Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus you've got. <laughs> I think the Lord knows why. <laughs> so let's read a passage from the Bible. Luke chapter 19 and verses 1 to 20. If you've ever been through Sunday school, you know the story. If you've ever been in, in the kids' time in the past, you've probably sung the song. <laughs> there are some things in the Bible we often would consider more like children's stories and some things the children would never look at ever until you're a grown-up. But it's not a children's story. It's equally in here as part of the Bible as everything else is. Luke 19, 1-10. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying he's gone to be a guest with a man who's a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. The wording almost says he wasn't intending stopping there. Pass through is like it's in the day. And he's going to go through and on to somewhere else where he'll stay the night later on. Not that he was going to stay the night here. And if anybody wanted to see Jesus today... You had to be quick. You had to take your opportunity and make it happen. Because he's passing through. Once he's gone, that's it. You've missed your chance. He's not hanging around. He's not here for days. Take your pick. He's on his way. He's going through. You've got your one chance if you want to meet Jesus today. To make it happen. There was a man we read called Zacchaeus a chief tax collector and rich. Probably didn't need to put that. I don't think there was any tax collector that wasn't rich more than likely in those days. Somehow you collected tax and you gave the tax to the Romans who you were collecting it on behalf of and somehow it didn't all get there and some stayed in your own bank account. They were not known for being the most honest, trustworthy people. And he says he's a chief tax collector. Just thought that sounds a bit strange. Sounds a bit more important. They must have had tax collectors as well. And he was a chief tax collector. I don't know what the difference is. It doesn't say. But in our world, it normally means more. If you're a chief, you're somehow higher. Maybe it was over other tax collectors or he had a bigger area or was more important in some way. But he was rich higher up the ladder. But it's worth noting, while he was paid well, and probably had a lot of things he wanted in terms of, you know, worldly goods, and probably a nice house than a lot of his neighbours, and, you know, probably food no problem. 
It took a high toll on his reputation among the people. Tax collectors were absolutely socially, morally shunned by society. While they worked for the Romans and thought probably oh, we're in with the Romans because we work for them, we collect their taxes, the Romans would have just thought of them as just more workers, more slaves, more workers. They wouldn't have cared about them at all. They didn't have any higher standing than the average normal person on the street in the Romans' eyes. But equally, on the other hand, they regularly come round your home and demand you pay the taxes to the Romans, so they also had no standing with their own fellow Jewish people. They hated them as well. Often because they wouldn't just take what they wanted nicely, and if you said, sorry, I can't pay today, they'd happily go away and I'll come back next week, don't worry about it, be all right. They more than likely also used force and, um, you know, really being horrible to people to try and get the taxes in. So they weren't very nice people. They had no friends apart from probably all the tax collectors. Whenever they got together and had a meal or something and invited somebody around, the only person tax collectors invited around was other tax collectors. Nobody else would come. Hated by the Romans, hated by their own people. A reputation for obtaining taxes via any means. So Zacchaeus was one of those. But today, when Jesus is coming through Jericho, he sought to see who Jesus was. For some, it doesn't tell us why. Maybe he was just curious. Lots of people that day would have sought to see who Jesus was. Lots of people were curious. This is now later on in Jesus' ministry. He's already been around a couple of years. He's done a lot of things. People now all over Israel have heard about this preacher, this person called Jesus, and of what he's done. Some of the things he's said. Some of the things that he's done in healing people. So now everybody is getting famous now. People, if he's coming to your village, you want to see him. People will come out and want to see who this Jesus is. Just because he's famous, not necessarily because they're really after something. Some of them want to see him because they might have a need, and they're hoping that he'll meet their need. You know, they need healing or something, or setting free or something. But others just want to see because of the famousness of him. We'd do the same. If the Queen or somebody was coming to, I mean, it comes to Leicester occasionally, the royal family and that, and everybody goes and watches came to Sile, but the whole of Sile would be out, standing in light crowds and, um, you know, wanting to see this famous person. Just the same with the people that day. They'd heard about this famous Jesus and his reputation. Maybe in some ways, he thought, well, that'll enhance my standing if I, you know, I'm a tax collector and thought of quite well, not thought of quite well, but I, I, I feel quite well in my own standards of where I am as a tax collector. Um, if I get to be seen with Jesus, that will make me look even better. It will help my standing among people. Maybe some there was an inkling of a need within him. There must have been something nagging away in Zacchaeus that day to cause him to want to see Jesus. There are many reasons that people seek Jesus. But unfortunately, there's one thing that Zacchaeus hadn't been blessed with. We all know the song, Zacchaeus was a very little man and a very little man was he. The one thing he hadn't been blessed with was height. He was short, or probably to be politically correct these days, he was vertically challenged. <laughs> I think that's the right, I'm not even with the right, it doesn't sound the right term, but I'm sure I've heard that. Um, he was short, he was at a disadvantage compared to all his peers, and unfortunately, as it says, because of the crowds, he could not see Jesus. A bit like a child, whatever you go to, something like the Queen coming or anything, um, you go to with a child, very often... I mean, a child can't see. The poor thing stand down there at your legs, like we said singing earlier, you know, and cannot see. 
So we either encourage our children, go, go push past her, but get at the front, right at the front. If there's a barrier or something, you get up to the barrier, the adults will let children stand at the front, or you pick them up. You often see children sitting on, you know, their dad's shoulders so that they can see what's going on because they're short. Zacchaeus also could not see what was going on. So he has a choice. How desperate is he today to fulfill that need? How much does he want to see Jesus today? He could have just stayed as he was, just seeing somebody at the back of somebody in front of him. He'd hear all the noise. He'd know Jesus was getting nearer. The commotions. People get nearer. The crowd gets louder. And he, you know, and he suddenly gets a peak of louder as he passes by. It gets quieter again and you can hear it on into the distance. He'd have seen his fellow Jews shouting. Jumping up and down. But been able to see nothing. What does he do? But Zacchaeus must have had something within him this day because he decides to do something rather than just stay where he was. He's more determined. It says he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree. He's planned, he's looked. What can I do? Jesus is coming, I can't see anything here. Ah, a plan, a tree. If I get up that tree, I'll be able to see better. Again, it's not easy. If you're a short person, climbing a tree is hard. Again, if you're blessed with being tall, reaching the branches is a lot easier than if you're a short person. So it still wasn't easy for him. But he climbs up into the tree, it says, and watches as Jesus gets nearer. And I don't know what he was expecting, what he was wanting, really. It says he wanted to see Jesus. Climbs him in a tree, you can see Jesus a lot clearer because he's now taller than everybody else. But I'm sure what he got next, he didn't expect. And no matter what you think of Jesus, want of Jesus, expect Jesus to do, Jesus will do what you don't expect. Jesus comes along, all the crowds around him, shouting, cheering, making a lot of noise. Jesus gets to the tree and he stops and he looks up. He stops and he looks up and he saw him. There's one thing about Jesus, he sees everything. Nothing can we hide from him. Jesus is the best friend we can have. God the Father, the best friend we have. Because you could tell him everything, even all our worst sins and things we do, that we'd never tell to anybody else. You'd never tell to another human being. There's not a problem telling God because he already knows everything about us. Everything we do, he sees every day. There'd have been many about who didn't notice Zacchaeus up the tree. How many times for many of us all we do is look around? Oh, well, often all we do is look at our own selves. What's going on in my life? What's all the problems I've got? What's the things I've got to cope with and do today without taking on anybody else's? Or we look around at the same, you know, we walk along. How many people you say you walk along looking at the ground? A lot of people do. Don't even look at other people's faces. Or we walk sort of looking around. But how often do we look up? Looking up takes more effort. Looking up's not a natural thing to do. How many times when you're walking around do you look up at the sky or at trees or at buildings? People didn't do that, but Jesus did. Jesus noticed was his what others don't. You can't hide from him, you can't stay in the shadows. But there's also, did Jesus just notice because he's wiser and he looks around and he, you know, he takes note of people more. But with Jesus being God, it's part of a bigger plan. 
Because such as he also, Jesus knew Zacchaeus would be there that day. Jesus knew Zacchaeus had built that tree. And in fact, Jesus knew before Zacchaeus was born that Zacchaeus would build that tree on that day. Because when you've created everything and you know everything, that's how it is. He also knew that today was Zacchaeus' lucky day because he made it so. So Jesus looks up at Zacchaeus, says, hurry up, come on, get down. Or make haste and come down because today I've got to stay at your house. He was acting what you have thought. Maybe he was hoping, I mean, he said, climbing up a tree is not the best thing for hoping nobody notices you, but he was probably hoping that, you know, he'd see Jesus, Jesus go past, and, you know, not to be called out in front of everybody. I wonder what he would have thought. Wow, surprise, honour, that this Jesus is coming to my house. Fear, I'm probably being slightly sexist here, but... I'm sure it would have been, you know, a load of ladies. Your first thoughts, comes what stakes my house in before he gets there. Did I tidy it up before I left? Jesus, can you give me ten minutes to run the Uber round before you get there, please, mate? Or even all of us. Crumbs, Jesus is coming to my house. Is everything in order? Or, you know, Jesus is coming to my life. Is everything in order? What food have I got in the house? He's coming to my house, you know, with, with 12 disciples as well. He's not coming on his own. <laughs> Rent a party. I've got, you know, what food have I got in the house to do a meal? Because the absolute right thing, you've got to guess, would be to prepare a meal to serve. But he said he made haste, came down and received him joyfully. Jesus into his house that day. But not everyone was happy. It's a happy occasion for Zacchaeus. But not everybody there was happy. When they saw it, it's a bit naughty in the Bible really that, when they saw it, because it doesn't say who they is, it doesn't explain who, who the other people are there. But when they saw it, they all complained, or another translation grumbled, saying he's gone to be a guest with a man who's a sinner. No matter what, there will always be those who complain and grumble and moan about Jesus and about his followers. The people here, I don't think were the normal people complaining. They might have thought, well, he could have come to my house instead, but, you know, they'd got really no great view on it. The people complaining here would have been the religious people, the devout Jews the religious authorities who thought Jesus should have gone to stay with them. If you come to our village, to our town, you stay with the religious authorities. They're the right people with the big houses and the standing in the synagogue. They're the people this Jesus should come and stay with. They wanted the prestige and the honour for themselves to say he came to my house. They kept the law. They were the good people. How dare Jesus go and stay with a sinner, a tax collector, a man who defrauded people, who had a bad reputation. Didn't even the possibility, I don't know, but didn't even maybe the law forbid that? Or their interpretation of the law forbid that? How dare Jesus do something outside of our cosy little life and how we think think things ought to be. But that's Jesus, I said earlier. Jesus doesn't do (laughs) what we expect him to do. It's interesting that Jesus Jesus had a thing for tax collectors. Um, But as he did for all sinners. Luke 5, 27 to 32, we haven't got time to... To look at it, he visits Levi, a man called Levi, who's also a tax collector, also known as Matthew, to us. Very similar, almost similar written story about he goes to his house and all the others moan again about him going and eating among sinners. Similar reaction from people. But Matthew, as we know, 
became one of the four main gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. That same Levi, also known as Matthew, a tax collector, is one of the four people who wrote the four gospels, which is why we know everything we know about Jesus. Matthew's the one, it says, who shares it from a Jewish point of view. Each of the Gospels is different. There are four different people writing them with four different backgrounds. Matthew's the one who is the most Jewish. The one who quotes the most Old Testament scriptures to show that this is a fulfilment of the, what was said in the Old Testament, Jesus coming. Also, Jesus, many other times, spends time with adulterers prostitutes, Samaritans, etc., etc. There's hope for us all, definitely. But the main point of an encounter with Jesus is that we're changed. Jesus is somebody that you cannot come across and him not have an effect. The effect might be a challenge, we feel uncomfortable, we might want to hide away, run away. All the effect is to soften our heart towards him. But you almost cannot have an encounter with Jesus in neutral and not feel anything. The point of an encounter with Jesus is that we're changed in some way. Something in our life changes and we're different. Not, not 100% different, not absolutely everything completely revolutionises in two minutes. But we start to think, to say, to act differently. And that was the effect we see on Zacchaeus. Verse 8. He stood up and said to the Lord, I will give half my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything falsely, I'll restore it fourfold. Now, he could have been trying to look good in front of his peers. He could have been putting on a show, trying to earn favour. Jesus is here, I'll, you know, I met this grand gesture of what I'm going to do. But somehow you can tell in this, well you can tell later by what Jesus says, but even there you tell... He means this. He went further than what the law stated. The law states about what you should do for restitution, to put things right between people. If you've stolen something, what you should do, like you should give it back or give back double. I, I, I can't remember exactly. But it says in my notes that this giving half to the poor and restoring fourfold goes way past what the law demanded. That shows he's not just being religious. It's coming out of his heart. And Jesus saw it in him as a change of heart. And he says, verse 9, Today, salvation has come to this house. And he doesn't, I mean, we say that, he doesn't mean to this house, he doesn't mean the physical building with the bricks and that got salvation that day, that's not possible. Today, salvation came to Zacchaeus. Today, salvation has come to Zacchaeus. Because he showed belief and he showed repentance and change by his actions. And then Jesus adds to it in the end in verse 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Jesus went to the home of sinners, to the people who needed him. Also the message version says he came to find and restore the lost to put it back as it should have been. In, in the verse, passage we didn't look earlier about Levi, verses 31 to 32, Jesus says, say, answered and said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician or a doctor, but those who are sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The problem was with the religious people that all didn't like what he was doing and complained and grumbled is they thought they were well. They didn't think they were sick. They thought everything was okay in their lives. 
They therefore didn't need a doctor. But Jesus came to the sinners, to the sick, to the ones who recognized their need of him. Just like Zacchaeus. And Jesus goes to those who recognize that they need him, who, like Zacchaeus, go out of their way to try and see him and to meet with him. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just want to acknowledge this morning, Lord, that we are sinners, Lord. We acknowledge our need of you. Lord, don't let there be anything in us that is religious, thinks we're all okay, we've got it all right. Lord, let nothing of that attitude be found in us. Lord, we just recognise we need you and your help. Lord, we are sick who need a doctor, Lord, and you are the great physician. Lord, we need, in a sense, not just <laughs> our bodies and physical things healing, Lord, we need our soul, our spirit, Lord, healing by you. Give us an attitude like Zacchaeus, Lord, not just to give up because we can't, and, and our limitations might be many other things than just being short. Lord, things that would stop us, Lord, we, we can't see, we, we can't quite get there, Lord. We, well, we maybe always feel that we've got a disadvantage. Lord, cause us to be like Zacchaeus, who instead chooses a different option and thought pattern. And I'm going to do something else. I'm going to try and get there another way. It makes an effort. Father, help us to do that. Lord, thank you that... You say lots of the times in the Bible, Lord, if we just reach out to you, just step in your direction, just do something, Lord, you'll be there. You'll meet with us. You're like that, Lord. If there's a big gap between us, you only want us to move a millimetre, and you'll move the miles. Because that's you, you are Heavenly Father, a good, good Father, Lord. As we thought about and sung this morning. Thank you for today. Bless, I pray, really bless each person that's here, Lord. They're your children, you're their father. Lord, cause all of us, wherever we are, however much we know you, Lord, or don't, Lord, to be drawn closer, to know you more. Only you can do that, Lord. You're the one who makes initiation and opens our eyes. I pray you would do that for all of us, Lord. And pray that many of us know many others, Lord, our families, friends, neighbours, work colleagues, Lord, who need to know you as well. We pray for them that you also would open their eyes, Lord, and make yourself known to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you all.